The 2001 romantic musical drama Glitter, starring Mariah Carey, hit theaters nearly 20 years ago. Most people remember Glitter as the era of Mariah Carey's infamous breakdown, but not many people actually know the details of what led to it. In this video, I will be revisiting the Glitter era and Mariah's breakdown. By 1997, Mariah Carey was an international superstar and top-selling recording artist only seven years into her musical career. She had released six platinum-selling albums and was already working on her Greatest Hits album. In the summer, she separated from her husband of four years, Tommy Mottola. He was the guy who discovered her and the chairman and CEO of Sony Music Entertainment, which was the parent company of her label, Columbia Records. Mariah debuted her new sexy image and started working with hip-hop producers and artists. Tommy was extremely controlling during their marriage, and her newfound independence angered him. Mariah called him abusive and said that he preyed on every insecurity she ever had. That year, she began developing a film and soundtrack titled All That Glitters. However, the project was put on the back burner so that she could focus on her seventh studio album, Rainbow, and getting out of her contract with Columbia. But Mariah still owed the label one more album to fulfill her contract. Virgin Records then offered Columbia $20 million to buy her out of her contract and signed a $100 million five album deal with Mariah. But unfortunately for her, the movie, now titled Glitter, was being produced by Sony Pictures and Columbia Pictures, tying her back up with her ex-husband. The movie started filming in late 2000, and in spring 2001, Mariah flew to Spain to work on the Glitter soundtrack. She had full creative control of the soundtrack and worked with producers like Jimmy Jam and Terry Lewis, DJ Clue and Rick James. Glitter was loosely based on her rise to fame and was about a poor multiracial girl from New York who makes it big as a singer. Mariah came up with the film concept, but the screenplay was written by Kate Lanier, who wrote What's Love Got To Do With It, and later wrote Crazy Sexy Cool, The TLC Story. In a world where proving yourself is everything. Hey, Billy, can you repeat that verse? Okay. They don't matter. They're just back up. One woman is about to get the chance. All right, everybody, when the microphone comes, I want you to do something special. Oh, to go from unknown. You have got a beautiful voice. I want to produce you. <laughs> yeah, right. To a world she's only dreamed of. Don't you be getting all freaky on the first date. It's right. not a date. It's not gonna let you ruin everything that I'm working for. It is all about you, right? The superstar always comes first. But love will never let it end. None of this would happen if you didn't believe in me. Mariah Carey. <laughs> Glitter. Come on. Come on. While recording the soundtrack, Mariah ran into some issues, thanks to her ex-husband. If you saw my video about Jennifer Lopez and all the artists she's ripped off, you'd remember me telling you that Tommy Mottola had it out for his ex-wife and was stealing songs from her to benefit the career of his new artist, Jennifer Lopez. On Jennifer's album, J. Lo, the original version of I'm Real was an upbeat solo dance track. The song sampled the old disco song, Firecracker. But turns out, Mariah was actually the one who originally found the Firecracker sample and recorded it on her soundtrack as Lover Boy. They were already using the track in the Glitter movie trailers, and she had already signed off on the sample. Sony execs were secretly informing Tommy about everything Mariah was doing for Glitter, leaving her paranoid. Tommy found out about the sample and made Jennifer record I'm Real and release it before Mariah could release Lover Boy. This caused Mariah to push back the single and change the melody to sample Cameo's 1986 hit Candy. 
The music publishers of Firecracker admitted that Mariah actually licensed the sample first, then Jennifer's people had it licensed almost two months later. Virgin Records rushed her to get the single and album out. Loverboy was released on July 16, 2001, and the single was poorly received. Critics called the song self-sabotage and alluded to her musical career and popularity being on the decline. Her weight gain was also mocked by Howard Stern and other media outlets. At the time, it was reported that Mariah hired a private investigator to find out if Tommy was behind the campaign to end her career. Mariah had recorded a duet with Ja Rule titled, If We, for the Glitter soundtrack produced by Irv Gotti. When Tommy heard it, he instructed Irv to make a record for Jennifer Lopez featuring Ja Rule that sounded exactly like the one his ex-wife recorded. The song was the I'm Real Murder Inc. remix, which was Jennifer's first crossover R&B hit. Tommy knew Mariah's album was months away from being released and wanted to get ahead of her. Was, let me give you the story of I'm Real. Can I give you the story of I'm Real? I'm Real was so crazy, and I'm gonna throw Tommy under the bus a little bit, but I don't give a about Tommy, so it's all good. It's all good. I'm talking about Tommy Mottola. Yeah, yeah, got it. So Tommy Mottola calls me at like 6 a.m. Mm -hmm. 6, 7, it was obscenely early, and he calls me because he found out me and Rule made a record with Mariah Carey. Mm. And at the time, he hated Mariah Carey. So he was pumping Jennifer Lopez to compete. Mm. So he calls me 6, 7 o'clock in the morning, and I'm like, what's up, Tom? What the f you want? It's, 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 it's all. He says, Irv, I need you to do me a favor. I said, what's up? I need you to make a record with J-Lo, but I want you to put Ja Rule on it and make it a duet kind of a record. So immediately when he says that, I'm like, this yeah, yeah. He knows we just did this shit with Mariah, which right. was a duety record, and he's trying to f Mariah. Then I went into the creative part. I said, look, man, I want total creative control. I don't want you telling me what to make. If I got to do a record with J-Lo, I want to do it however the f I want to do it. Mm -hmm. He says, I don't give a f what you do as long as it's a duet with right. Ja. I said, cool. Loverboy didn't get much radio airplay, but still managed to sell 500,000 units in the first week. Loverboy reached number two on Billboard's Hot 100, but it became her worst selling single when it started declining the following week. This pushed Mariah into heavy promotion for the single and forthcoming album. She embarked on a European 7-city, 14-day tour, then came back to America for more promo. Once back in America, Mariah did appearances and interviews back-to-back -back with little to no sleep. She eventually became unhinged, and in each interview, she was manic, hyper, talkative, and openly expressed how tired she was. Because I don't know, they booked it in advance, but my mom is very upset, let me tell you why. Because she loves you now. She's in love with you, Carson. Oh, no. Yeah, it's good. But you're really not her type, though. Hey, you're just... not her type. My mom goes for a more ethnic type of man. <laughs> that means I'm just as white as they come? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, but for my mom, you are. For the... <laughs> ah. You're looking great. Are you feeling good? I feel all right. <laughs> oh, good. Uh... I've been up for like 20-something hours. I'm sorry, go ahead. No, that's all right. Now, you have been up for 20-something hours because uh, you, you were telling me that you've just finished uh, wrapping a film as of this morning. Is that correct? Yes, 6 a.m. Well, 3 a.m. And then I got home. I guess I got in bed about 6 a.m. And I'm fine, but the rest of the people with me are, like, ready to collapse. They're seeing double <laughs> <laughs> of everything. Now the okay, we're sorry. Right, we're rolling. Michael, you might make me laugh. I'm going to leave. I don't know why. Because I will make you laugh. Yeah, you will. I'm hearing it. I'll never do anything. You don't do that. It's not you. Okay. Yeah, let's have Michael be Okay, we're rolling. On July 19th, Mariah made a surprise appearance on TRL, and it became one of the most highly publicized moments of her career and in pop culture history. As the show was taping, following a commercial break, Mariah crashed the stage in a large t-shirt and started rambling on the microphone. She then took her shirt off, leading TRL host Carson Daly to say, Mariah um, Carey's okay. lost her mind. I don't, I don't know exactly what's going on here. I was going to commercial break, <laughs> Wait, uh, I had the other video, and I hear her singing. You brought ice What are you doing? 
Mariah Carey is stripping on TRL right now. Is it my birthday that I didn't know about it? Wow. You like this. Holy mackerel. You like this. Hey, can we get the oh, AC cranked oh, down? The AC. Crank it down. Get nice and cool. Wow. You uh, like this? What, is, what are you doing? What did you bring? I'm what trying to... You're my therapy session right now, Carson. Okay, you see, what's you wrong? See, every now and then, somebody needs a little therapy. Yes, I understand that. And today is that moment for me. <laughs> what's wrong? Well, you weren't... Uh, Everything's Aren't great. you busy? You just came by TRL Hello. to hang out? I did not you know, know about just, this. Is it just here? What is this you brought? Is this ice cream? Is this ice it's the ice cream truck. See, they had decorated this. Wait, try to avoid shots because these shorts are really yeah, short. Yeah, just don't move. Just Talk no, about no, the no. ice cream. But we got to discuss this. Okay. Things are right, from here. Move. I don't move. But they, see, these ain't my, these are just some folks on the nice street. Well, we like this. Look at the ice cream truck. I bought, I bought everybody presents. Hold All right, on. right here. I got to go to break. They're killing me. And I didn't know about this. We'll be right back with Mariah Carey on TRL unexpectedly passing out ice cream. And more jingles. More videos. Alright! Whoa! More Mariah. Yes. I don't know. <laughs> and delivers ice cream to our audience. A little unannounced visit. But believe me, we're not arguing. I, I was just saying to Mariah before, I was like, what are you doing? Like, you're a huge superstar. You just because walked I'm in our little show and gave ice cream, ice cream to kids, and they you all love you. It's you know what? Ice great. cream is important. You know what I'm saying? Yes. It's the like, simple things in life we often overlook. Things. Exactly. Like, you could have drama all day long. Sure. Whatever. We, we all do these things. Yes. You know what I'm saying? But the problem is, if you don't have ice cream in your right. life, Sometimes you just might go a little bit crazy. And that's a metaphor and I'm not doing for a lot that. more. Do you guys sure. like my shirt? Yes, we love what you're wearing, Mariah. Okay. This is what you and walked this is, in this with. This is Carson's shirt. Yeah, that's lovely, isn't it? Me and Carson it? might, you know, we might do a clothing line or something. You're right. So perhaps, like, this could be the start of it. That, of course, it? would be the girls' division of our clothing line. <laughs> well, a guy could wear this. What's wrong with a guy wearing this? Sure, sure, sure. We, we love all types of people. While I have you here, you know, Mariah, we're celebrating 20 years. 20 years of pop yep. music here on MTV. Yes. It's a huge... Hey, huh? We have one for you tucked away. we got to watch uh, your right. video, Lover oh, Boy. But, but I have a thing, I have a oh, thing yeah, for have my mom. Is that is that in this segment? Uh, sure. Do my mom better be watching this. She's going to be mad. At me. We're not going by any particular segment at this point, I don't think. Oh, what do you have? Winging is it? Here? Yeah, we're winging yeah, yeah, yeah. it. In okay. more ways than one. I hope my mom's watching this. Who wants a shirt? Anybody? <laughs> a lot of things also. Okay. Yes. Read the letter. So, hi, Car wait, July 19, 2001. Oh, boy. Hi, Carson. Here's a very, very recent picture. I'm going to read it in her voice. Okay. Hi, Carson. Here's a very, very recent picture of me. Hope you like it. By the way, loved your outfit yesterday. It complimented your eyes. <laughs> this is Mariah's mother. This is my mom. Please tell all the TRL watchers to keep... Now, you can read this. I'm not making this up. Please tell all the TRL watchers... Wait, wait. What, to keep voting for my baby girl's lover boy, Mariah's working. Oh, Mariah's working herself into the ground, and that's not stellar. <laughs> I'll see you at the 20th anniversary, looking exactly like this picture. Oh yes. <laughs> keep up the good work, your newest fan, Mariah's mom, Pat. Thank you very much, Pat. Carson. Mariah Carey, God bless we love you. you. We have to All go right. upstate to check in with MTV yeah. News on that Tiro tour wow. last night, guys. How wow. did it go? Hey. Two days later, Mariah arrived at a promotional event carrying a Hello Kitty boombox, telling reporters she needed a day off. At one point, her publicist Cindy Berger attempted to wrestle away the microphone after she began talking about haters. I just think I'm a human being that's trying to live like everybody else. I don't know what I am other than a person that needs one day. Like, this is my kind of like my day off. What? I'm doing very well. We're all just living in the moment of being positive, and there's like people called haters. No, 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 Cindy, Cindy. One more thing. And we give them positivity. Let's go. You see, I can't even get a minute. Bye. Come on. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Later in the week, she posted a number of long voice messages on her website. She said, I'm honestly really, really delirious and stressed out and overworked and doing too much. She said, I haven't slept in like two weeks. And that's an important detail for you to know. It's an insane time in my life. It's crazy. Everything is going on like really fast. Everyone from my manager to everyone that's with me, we're all a bunch of freaks right now because we're trying really hard to make this deadline and just really get everything together. She said that if she wasn't busy, she'd be on the floor crying. So basically all I really want to say is I don't know what's going on with life and I hope all the fans are good and 
Um, I just want you to know that I'm trying to understand things in life right now. And so I really don't feel that I should be doing music right now. And I just want everyone to understand that. And that's really true. So um, if I don't make music, it's not because I don't want to for you fans. And if I, um, I have two phones in my ear. I'm not saying defeated because I'm not defeated. I'm just going to do this for me. And I know that the people who care about me will care about me, but I just can't trust anybody anymore right now because I don't understand what's going on. So, because I'm not watching TV, I'm just literally trying to get out of this room. And uh, I don't know if that makes any sense to anybody, but the truth is I am calling to say that I love you to my fans. I hope this message gets to you. I'm not going to be, uh, are you going to, Glitter is going to be out soon, and you're going to have that, and then I'm going to be taking some time off. I can't reach you Barry, so I'd like to say that, Nancy, I will record and stuff. It's just that I needed some time off, but nobody was really giving it to me, and I feel that that's only because um, <clears throat> of the situation that we've been dealing with for a while, and that my managers were a little upset about it, and they were trying to press on and get through it, but that didn't work, and so it's nobody's fault, really. It's just that I got, I worked, um, an incident took place that I'm not trying to have any bad karma surrounding by telling people's names. And uh, what I would like to do is just take a little break or at least get one night of sleep without someone popping up about a video or a thing. When all I really want to do is to be me, and that's what I should have done in the first place. But somebody had me, people, whatever. I allowed myself to be a little bit too paranoid about life. And life is for living, so... That's how deep this is. So if anybody gets this that really cares, just do me a favor. Close the record. Close the management company down that I own. And I'm going to lie here. Wait for something to happen. Not that anybody cares. Probably sounds ridiculous. <laughs> but um, I can't reach anybody on the phone I'm at, so that's where we're at. So fans, I love you. We're going to do it again. And um, we're going to do it. We're going to make it. And if I take a little time off, that's cool. And that's all I'm saying. Lambs, you know how I love you. And um, everything is great, all right? Bye. Her team would remove the messages from the website immediately after. Mariah had become so exhausted and disoriented that she started breaking glasses and dishes in her hotel room. Her mother, Patricia, had to call 911 to help get control of her. On July 26, she checked herself into the hospital to undergo psychiatric care citing extreme exhaustion and a physical and emotional breakdown. All promotion for the album and movie was halted and the release dates were pushed back. She later transferred to Silver Hill Mental Hospital in Connecticut, where she stayed for two weeks. On August 25th, she broke her silence to thank her fans and also express her condolences for the death of R&B singer Aaliyah. Hey, Lam, it's me. I just wanted to call in and say I love you and thank you so much for everything and for just giving me the strength to, like, deal with any nonsense because life is too short to dwell on any negativity, and I just want you to know that I appreciate you so much, and I say it all the time, but I really mean it, and I'm blessed to have everything I have, and we all are, and I just want to send out love to everybody and tell you how grateful I am just to be where I am and to have you, and thank you for getting me through everything. Love you much. Bye. Hey, as I said in my earlier message, life is really, really precious, and I just want to send out my deepest sympathy and love to Aaliyah and her family, and... um. That's the most important thing, life and appreciating it. Bye-bye. A few days later, on September 6, Mariah admitted herself into UCLA Medical Institute because she needed more time to recover and rest. The Glitter soundtrack was released on September 11th, and we all know what event took place that day. The tragedy overshadowed the release, and the album only sold 113,000 copies in the first week, compared to her previous album's first week sales of 320,000. The film was released 10 days later, and Mariah was out of the hospital just in time to attend the premiere.
Friends already know that I'm a workaholic and that I'm an insomniac. And um, what I did is I worked myself into the ground, but that's like my problems are minuscule compared to what's going on with our country. Tonight I'm just thankful to be here, to be alive. I think, um, you know, the movie is about, you know, it's, it's a nice story. It's, it's a little bit, you know, people get a little emotional, but it's a good story. There's some light moments. And Film critics pan the film for the bad movie plot and acting. It grossed only $5 million on a $22 million budget, and Mariah tried her best to distance herself from the project. The media mocked her for her mental health and breakdown, while shows like Mad TV spoofed the film and breakdown. There was even jokes made about the film during the Oscars ceremony. In a world where a diva can get a film made and have it not quite work out, can get a second chance. I want to look at rainbows, and I want to eat ice cream, and bunnies, and hug trees. If we surround the diva with coherent people who actually can act. Coming September 30th, 2001, Sony Classics presents Academy Award winner Al Pacino. Let me tell you something. You are going to be a star. The biggest star there ever was. And Peter Travers, film critic for Rolling Stone, exclaims, Brava! Only the divine LeCarey could sing so many songs without melodies. So effortless. It's as if she made them up as she went along. Gutter. Probably coming this Thanksgiving. Christmas at the latest. Oh, Mariah, shut up! She spoke about her exhaustion in interviews with Oprah and David Letterman, but she refused to admit that it was a mental breakdown. The stigma of mental health is what kept her from admitting it. So many things were so overly sensationalized over and over again, but basically I've been a workaholic my whole life. My schedule this past summer was like beyond ridiculous. Uh -huh. You know, one day in one country, the next day back here promoting all over the place. I was totally sleep deprived and I was exhausted. And it was like at a certain point, I just got a wake up call and it was like, this has to stop. And you know, I had to take a moment and just draw a line and you know, get a wake-up call and say, hey, take care of yourself like a human being, not like a machine. Now, now, ha now had you done something? This, was this like a, is it a nervous breakdown? Is it a physical no, breakdown? Is it an emotional breakdown? Is it not a breakdown? It was it so bizarre because they were like, a breakdown, a nervous breakdown, mm -hmm. a mental melt, and all these things and, you know, that I shouldn't even be repeating because it's like tabloid fodder and all that kind the, of The story nonsense. kind of builds itself, so, doesn't it? Right. Because I thought you explained it. It's, now, has anybody got any confusion going on about what happened? <laughs> it's very well explained because if you transfer to your own life, to mm -hmm. you put yourself in your own life and what you would be like with no sleep. See, I, I get this so well that when you don't sleep for a while, Hello. I don't have my pleasing personality. Exactly. You just, you get shorter and shorter. Your fuse right. gets shorter and shorter. Mm -hmm. So imagine your, shoes, your fuse gets shorter and shorter. And if you do that for a month or, then two. It, or two months and mm -hmm. then a year, you're just living on a short fuse. Mm -hmm. And eventually you end up collapsing because it's mm -hmm. your body, your mind, your spirit saying, yeah. hello. Saying, hey, wake up. Wake up. It was a wake up call. Yeah. You know? It was a wake up call. And good for you that it didn't have to be, you know, crack or heroin or whatever. Exactly. Which yeah. is another thing people were saying, which is like, so not me. Yeah. You know what I mean? I never thought that at all. Mm. But what were you saying to me, Kim, during where we're sitting next to Kim during... Mariah's song. Yeah, that I didn't realize that it was only two weeks. Um, I mean, the media just like, you know, yeah. makes I mean, it seem like it's going on forever. Yeah, and well, it's a story they get to talk about. Right. And she released her ninth studio album, Charm Bracelet, in 2002. It had decent amount of success, but not as successful as her earlier albums. Then in 2005, she made a major comeback with her number one, six-time platinum selling album, The Emancipation of Mimi. It sold 10 million copies worldwide, and the most successful song on the album, We Belong Together, spent 14 non-consecutive weeks at number one, and was later hailed the song of the decade by Billboard. She went on to release more successful albums and singles in the following years. In 2007, she said in an interview, a lot of things went wrong in 2001, 
and people couldn't really make jokes about that. But you know, when I listen to the soundtrack, I'm like, some of these are the best songs and vocal performances ever. Finally, in 2015, she opened up about her battle with bipolar disorder. She revealed that she was in fact first diagnosed back in 2001 when she was hospitalized, but was afraid that the diagnosis would become public. She said in People magazine, Until recently, I lived in denial and isolation in constant fear someone would expose me. It was too heavy a burden to carry and I simply couldn't do that anymore. I sought and received treatment. I put positive people around me and I got back to doing what I love, writing songs and making music. For a long time, I thought I had severe sleep disorder, but it wasn't normal insomnia and I wasn't lying awake counting sheep. I was working and working and working. I was irritable and in constant fear of letting people down. It turns out that I was experiencing a form of mania. Eventually, I would just hit a wall. I guess my depressive episodes were characterized by having very low energy. I would feel so lonely and sad, even guilty that I wasn't doing what I needed to be doing for my career. Her fans started a Justice for Glitter campaign to give the album the recognition it deserves. Fans started a petition demanding that streaming services add the album. The album reached number one on iTunes when the campaign started in 2018. Then finally in May 2020, the Glitter soundtrack was made available on streaming platforms. Whether the film and movie were good or not, Mariah definitely didn't deserve the harassment from her ex-husband and the media. And besides, the Glitter era had some of the best promotional photos and outfits of her career. Make sure you guys stream the soundtrack for Glitter. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and like this video and subscribe to Black Femininity TV for more content.